Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We would like to say welcome and greetings to each and every one of you out there in Radio Land and everyone that's out there with, uh, <clears throat> in several places, wherever you may be, uh, at home, in your vehicles, on lunch break, some sick and shut in, all over the seven cities and abroad. We want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Right here on your ministry station, WKGM. Oh, that's right. Uh, you are listening to the Truth of the Matter radio program. And for those that do not know, I am your favorite pastor's favorite pastor, Pastor Rob Scarborough. So uh, we want to welcome all of you all who tune in to us each and every Thursday uh, at 12 noon and each and every Saturday at 3 p.m. Again, welcome to all those that tune in to us so faithfully each and every Thursday at 12 noon each and every Saturday at 3 p.m. And even to our most faithful enemies and those who are labeled detractors, we want to say welcome and greetings to all of you uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. So with that being said, we don't want to prolong any further. I want to do as often we do, and that is take a moment to just welcome everybody and let everybody know we're on the air live, see who's listening. Uh, by the way, you ought to get on the phone and call somebody, tell them to call everybody and tell them to call anybody. Uh, tell them that that crazy preacher is back on the air again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got work to do. For those that have been uh, listening to us in previous broadcasts, we are preparing to formulate our, uh, our comprehensive, uh, that's right, our detailed list of lies taught in the church. I'll get back to all of that after I touch bases with the wonderful people uh, that tune into us. Uh, and the phone lines are open at 757-357-9546. Again, the phone lines are open at 757-357-9546. And or you can also reach us live in the studio at 622-9546. So again, I'll give you both numbers. 622-9546 and or 357-9546. Call us. I want to speak with you live. For those that don't know, I do travel here every Thursday because the previous recorded broadcasts are okay, but there's nothing like touching the people. There's nothing like talking to you live, taking your questions, concerns, uh, even addressing some of uh, what may be issues in the body of Christ and outside of it. So let's go to the lines and take some callers today. Uh, get on the phone. Let's talk. I want to say good afternoon, and let's take our first caller of the day. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for tuning in. Praise the Lord, Pastor Rob. This is Brother Sid McKay here in the great city of Newport News, Virginia. Yes, sir. And Welcome. I know that a lot of people around here in Newport News are listening. A lot of ministers, a lot of deacons, a lot of evangelists, they all, yeah, they got their ears to the radio. Yes. And I, I just remind of you and I extend that invitation to a possibility of a Bible study here in Newport News where they can come out and see and hear in person the two words. That's yes, yes, that. yes. Welcome and good afternoon to you, sir. And uh, I do thank you for that great reminder, uh, which brings me to some radio business. And that is, uh, I would like to get some feedback. I I'm going to start getting some feedback from those who are on the other side of the tunnel. And what I mean by the other side of the tunnel, you, may you all may have to correct me because I'm not from this area. Uh, I do travel here. We meet every Thursday, and we will be meeting tonight, the Lord's willing, at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. By the way, get on the phone lines. I want to hear who's listening. Hopefully, we'll get some folks that's tuned in for the first time. You've never heard a radio broadcast like this before. In a few minutes, uh, let me tell you why you should be on the phone calling folks. I'm talking about you ought to get on the phone and call them like you got some good, hot, juicy gossip. You ought to just call them and tell them, turn on the radio because we're here live and I'm getting ready to uh, we're going to put together a list together of church lies that's lies that have been told in the church doctrinal uh, b biblical scriptural based uh, falsehood deception that's taught in most churches. That's right. In most churches, we're going to expose the enemy and the lies that have spewed out of his mouth for quite some time.
time. So without uh, further ado, the phone lines are open. And while I'm doing that, I'll tell you about what I'm um, considering doing. But I want to get some feedback over the next few weeks starting today. Uh, the phone lines are open at 357-9546. So uh, as we were uh, stating, and, and Brother Sid, thank you, uh, we're considering putting a Bible study on the other side of the tunnel. And, he, and here's the reason. You know, I, I always keep it honest. And I'm very blatant and real. And so I'm going to tell you the truth. Some folks fuss for whatever reason about coming across the tunnel, which I haven't figured out really why, because I drive all the way from Richmond just to be here. And I guess if I come all the way from Richmond, it shouldn't be too much for you to cross the tunnel. However, uh, I'm wondering with the right amount of feedback, would it be worth the time, would it be uh, expedient that we uh, decide on possibly putting a class on the other side of the tunnel? Now, I don't, you don't have to call the broadcast if, with it if you don't want. I am going to give you a number. You can text me your preference. Uh, some of you have not come out to the class. Is it true that some of you have not come because it's harder for you to come across the tunnel or you're not able, and that if we were to put a class on the uh, – when I say the other side, we meet in Norfolk now. So if I were to put a class, I guess that would be what Hampton, uh, the Hampton, Newport News going back uh, t it, it, uh, towards Williamsburg. If I were to put one somewhere in there, not crossing the tunnel, heading into Norfolk and uh, further down towards the beach, how many of you all would be able to come? So you can text me about that information and any inf information personal. And I'll be getting your text even while I'm on the air just to tell everybody what you all are saying. At 804-245-7009. That's right. You can text me and let me know if that would be feasible, uh, would uh, increase your chances of being able to worship with us, so on and so forth, at 804-245-7009. That's my personal number, and I'm taking text throughout the broadcast at that number. But if you want to talk to me live on the air, call me at 357-9546, because in just a few minutes, I got to get rolling and tell y'all about what we're working on over the next few weeks, our list of lies taught in the church. Let's go to the phone lines and take another caller today. 357-9546. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, Scarborough. This is Austin calling from Tawano. Welcome. Hey, uh, when you talk about Hampton and Newport News, that's the peninsula and Virginia Beach, Norfolk, that's the south side. So I would label everything on the Hampton side as the peninsula. Yep, and everything else is the south side. I'm going to try to remember that because I think that would be helpful to those who— uh, uh, what you're telling me is that people here know it, uh, they label it in that way. They would know what I'm talking about, right? Hey, and i got a perfect place, and I'll help sponsor it for the first couple months. But uh, will, will you come? Will you come? Yes, I will be there. Okay, and, there's one. Ladies and, and gentlemen, there's I'll one and... Do it on Saturday night. Saturday night? Man, what if I got a hot date? How am I going to do that on the Saturday night? I, and, we'll, and we'll, we have radio <laughs> on Saturday, too, so... <laughs> we'll talk about it, Austin, but I want right. to thank you for your heart, your offer, and everyone has heard it. So when you do that, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for everyone. And I think that's a great thing, and we may take you up on that, Austin. So we'll be back. What I'm going to do over the next few weeks is just kind of see who texts me, who, who conversates with me about it, just as you just have done, and we'll go from there. 357-9546, if you're listening out there in the radio land, we're getting ready to talk about lies. And by the way, I don't know if anybody made a list with me on last week, but I did uh, make a mistake, and I, I left the list in another folder. I left the list in another folder, and, well, it's no problem, because we can make a list of lies in no time. That's right. Uh, I can come up with a list of lies that the church teaches uh, in my sleep. So with, with that being said, I want you all to please get ready because we're going to get back to where we were. And this time I'm going to store them. I guess I'll store them in my phone because I'm going to always have my phone with me. I have some people texting me already. Uh, I got one text that says, yeah, yes, Hampton would be nice. Uh, yes, Hampton would be nice. So I take that from my brother and uh, or sister who just texted me. Yes, Hampton would be nice. All right, thank you. I hope that means you'll be there. 
Okay? I hope it's just not nice. I hope it's nice enough that you'll come out and meet me there, and it'll bless my heart, and I believe it'll bless yours. Let's go to the phone lines, uh, 357-9546. In a few minutes, we're going to get to our church last. I'm going to need your help because I left my list, and I think it's a good thing I left my list because I'm going to see who's on their toes, who's been paying attention. And if you've never heard this broadcast before, you need to get on the phone and call everybody you know that go to church and that doesn't go to church and tell them there's a preacher that's getting ready to expose the lies taught in church one by one by one. We're going to make a list and then we're going to come back and begin to talk about those things. Let's go to the air today. We got another caller? 357-9546 and or 622-9546. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, good afternoon, Pastor. Welcome. Hello there. Okay. Um, I, I got a quick one quick question for you. Go ahead. And then I got a, um, another question that might be, you know, maybe a little bit longer. Take your time. Go ahead. Time that you might spend discussing it. My first question is, is how come we are not celebrating the Passover? The Passover is, is God-ordained um, ceremony um, in the Bible, not Christmas or Easter. How come, we, how come pastors aren't putting out that we should be celebrating the Passover? All right. Now, I can't answer for why other preachers don't do what uh, what you're asking as far as celebrating or observing the, the Passover. As many have found the scriptures to say that the, the Passover is forever, how, uh, so on and so forth. I can only answer for this, Pastor, in, in, in all fairness. Um, and I will, I will okay. tell you that that is a teaching in itself. Um, like all Old Testament and I'm going to say this, and, and, and I, I know you, I want you to hear me out because I'm not insinuating that it's done away with in that it doesn't exist anymore like others would. But I need you to hear me out uh, as I'm going to give you just a little bit of information and hope that you all will come out to the class and get a, a little bit better detailed description. So here, here we go. Uh, as with all Old Testament commandments, uh, uh, rituals, observance, so on and so forth, uh, Sabbaths, holy days, what have you, I am a firm believer that these things were given to us, watch this, by God through uh, the prophets as an example. And that's what the Bible says. So when I say that, I'm saying that based on scripture that says it was given to us based on Bible. So the scripture where I would get that from is in the book of Corinthians. It tells us these things were written. And he talks about is in samples or examples. They were also, the Bible also says they were written a four time for our learning. Now, the question is, what do we learn from these Old Testament based, law based rituals, observances, so on and so forth. Because the Bible says they were given to us for our learning. The question is, do we learn to do them the same way that the Old Testament did them? Or is there a lesson that must be learned as to how we carry them out or how they are carried out under the new covenant? That's what the that's the question that must be asked, and that is the teaching that must be given, because the church does not understand that God doesn't just totally destroy uh, and say that it doesn't exist anymore. But what God does is He takes the natural things that were given to us, and He converts them over to spirit. For the Bible says, first comes the natural, then comes the spirit or the spiritual. So we have to ask ourselves, how do we learn that these things are now kept? Now, I have no problem, not today on the air, but I have no problem with dealing with it, and I have done it many, many, many times. There is a meaning behind the Passover. But I'm here to tell you, brother, and, and I would say to, uh, in all fairness, that you deserve to hear the conclusion of it before, you know, I'm not looking for you to lock into it, but I am looking for you to study it and also come out and share with us. I am saying that the Bible does not carry out the Passover, and many other observances as they were carried out 
under the Old Testament, un, un, under the Old Covenant. For a covenant is an agreement. And what God gave us in the New Covenant was a new contract or a new agreement as to how we are in relationship to him. So I don't believe that the Passover is done by a long shot. I just understand that these things were given to us for our learning. So what I have learned is what people need to come out on Thursday nights and get. Uh, and I know that's not answering your question in depth, but I am telling you, I can't tell you why others don't, but it would, very, it would be very interesting, I promise you, if you'd come out and get the conclusion to that matter. What's your next question? Okay, my next question is about the law. Okay. Okay. Um... I'm 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 gonna take you to um, Matthew five seventeen and five eighteen where uh, he, uh, Jesus is talking. He says, uh, "Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled." Um. To me, that sounds like the law still exists. Oh, listen to me. The law still exists, but you got to ask yourself, what does exist mean? And what do you mean by it still exists? It's no question that it exists, but my question mm -hmm. to you is, what is the law for you? It exists, no well, question. It's not going to disappear. It's not going to cease mm -hmm. to exist. Uh, I, I agree, but what does it mean to you? Because uh, that's where the debate is coming in. That's where the disagreement or the misunderstandings and so on and so forth. What does the law mean for you? And you can you can go ahead if you want to take and answer that. Well, well, it's another part uh, that makes it kind of complicated. Is that <laughs> I feel. Now, now, a lot of people call me a heretic for saying this and, you know, and, and other words also, but I feel that the law was only given to the Israelites, you know what I'm saying? It, it was given to, for them to follow, you know? Um, and there's a big question mark of where are the Israelites today? These are bloodline descendants of the, um, the, the uh, 12 tribes, well, bloodline descendants of Jacob. From out of him comes the twelve tribes. So that's that's it's a big controversy over this. Um, I got some more information, but it'll take me too long to bring this out. I got another book that um, uh, it, it's going to take me too long, Pastor. So I'm 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 still researching this myself. I, I want to see you. Do you have anything else to? I want to hmm? see you. I I will go. Oh, listen to me. If you come out, brother, and let me know when you're mm -hmm. coming, I will actually take. A portion of the class just to right. teach just to teach on exactly the law, what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. you just gotta come out, man. I mean, I I, I can't do it on the air, but I do deal right. with the in depth. And you you, you may mm -hmm. since you're not gonna go deep into detail, I won't either. But I'm gonna give you a quick yeah. answer to your quick uh your quick statement, and that is First mm -hmm. of all, there are several things that we need to be taught. What was the purpose of the law of Moses? Do you even do, do you know what the purpose of the law was? Because when we know what a purpose for a thing is, that guides us into what it will do. For what sin was. To tell us what sin was. Yes. I agree. So we, we, we can agree right there. We can start there, and we have similarities mm -hmm. in that. So the law was given... To, to point out to sin. For the Bible says it, it pointed us or it, it gave us knowledge of sin. Mm -hmm. Now, the question we have to ask is, what else? Is there anything mm -hmm. else that the law does? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you're right, and I agree with that. that, that that's only a part of it, though. Uh, that's a very yeah, yeah. important part. But let me just give you a little bit more of what you need to put in your arsenal about what the purpose of the law was. The purpose okay. of the law... It's not only to point out our sin, but the purpose of the law was to point us to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Can we agree or no on that? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, why is that important? Because why it pointed us to Jesus Christ, it was labeled in the Bible, and this is not my words. As a matter of fact, in Galatians 3, 22, 23, somewhere up in there, it says, But the scripture have concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Verse 23 says, But before faith came, we were kept mm -hmm. under the law. Now, hold on for a minute, brother. Mm -hmm. Before mm -hmm. faith came, mm 
We were kept mm -hmm. under the law. So first of all, you see that there's a divider of time, meaning there was a portion of time where people didn't have faith because they were still under the law. And then it goes okay. on in verse 23, it says, they were shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed, which means that nobody that's under the law is introduced to faith. Now, now, watch this. Now, I'm not making it up. I'm reading it to you from the scripture. So I asked you what was the other meaning, because you were exactly right about one of the points of the law was to point out sin, point out sin. But let me tell you the other one. Here's the verse to back it up. Galatians 3.24 says, Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Didn't I just tell you that? We agreed that it points us to who? To Christ. That we might be justified by faith. But okay. after that, watch this, watch the word. But after that, faith has come and we no longer are under a schoolmaster. So right here in this scripture, and I'm going to leave it alone since you didn't get too far in it. The Bible states mm -hmm. that the law was given to point us to Christ because there was no faith under the law. And that after the law, Christ would come and give us faith. And that after Christ has come, there'd be no need for the schoolmaster. Well, again, who is the schoolmaster? It is, or what is the schoolmaster? It is the law. So I'm telling you, brother, another thing that the reason why you need to come out to this class is because you're right. There is a lot of discrepancy as to who the real Israel is. And I'm going to tell you something. The true Israel can only keep the laws of God, but that has nothing to do with a bloodline. That's why you need to come out to this class, because I'm going to show you under the Old Testament, you would be 100% right. We'd have to find the original blood-kept Jews to even be able to uh, address this situation. But under the new agreement, the new agreement doesn't call spiritual Jews, I mean, call, call Jews, Jews who are under a certain bloodline, but it labels Jews people who are spiritual Jews. Come out to the class, brother, and uh, if you got any more to add to it or any more questions please call me back all right i'm telling you that's a hard pill to swallow because my brother is seeking and i believe he's sincere and i gave him a sincerely true answer but something is wrong there did y'all hear that we're no longer under the law because the law is a schoolmaster i didn't tell him my opinion i gave him bible chapter and verse i took him to the address walked in the house now with that being said let me see what time it is. Oh, the phone lines are quiet today. Y'all going to get quiet on me? Y'all acting brand new today? Uh, three five seven nine five four six. I want to hear, is anybody listening on this Thursday? If the phone lines don't get cooking, I'm going to pull. You know what? I'm in a certain kind of mood. I'm going to have the, the engineer to put on a previous tape, and I'm getting back on the road and go home and try to get me a nap in before the night somehow which is probably impossible, but I, I'm going to get, I'm going to go home. I came here to talk to the people of the seven cities who have Bible questions and that are going to help me put together a list of lies that the church is telling. And I want to talk to you, 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 that's in that car, wherever you are. What does it cost you? Listen, I had to pay gas. I had to put up time. I had to put wear and tear on the vehicle. I had to do everything just to get here to talk to you. What does it cost you to pick up the phone and call me at 357-9546 and say, hey, I'm listening today. Hey, I'm ready for these lies. I want to hear this. 357-9546 or 622-9546 and we'll start our list in about in the, within the next five minutes. Let's go to the line. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Good Thank you for good. tuning in. How you doing this afternoon? Wonderful. I'm glad to know it. And uh, uh, Speaking on this topic that you were just on, uh, it, it might seem simple but it's profound that Law is for lawbreakers. If you're not breaking the law, you don't need no law. Whoa! Ho, ho, hold on, hold on, brother. Stay right there. So, really, what you just said to me, and let, let me show you that I agree and why I agree with you, because first of all, what you just said is the Bible. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 says that the law is not made for a righteous man. <laughs> uh oh! Amen. In other words, any man that has Christ don't need the law. Amen. But for the lawless and the disobedient. That's 1 Timothy 1 and 9. Amen. That's the word. Woo! 
Woo. Good stuff, brother. Good stuff. Now you're talking Bible. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to need your help in a minute because we're going to have to start over. And I'm going to put this list of lies in my in my cell phone memory. So that way, even if I leave the, the folder at home, I can always go back to it and we'll keep on track. Thank you. Let's go to... A caller, 357-9546. All right, we lost them. 357-9546. Call me up if you're out there in Radio Land. Again, that's 357-9546 or 622-9546. Y'all are unbelievably quiet today, and that's no problem. I already told you what I'm going to do. And uh, let the chips fall where they may. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, you're on the air. Yes, how you doing? Wonderful. How are you? Uh, we're in the barbershop, and we're listening to you, and we had the discussion. Oh, of- yeah. I love it. Hold on. Let me give a shout-out to the barbershop. Everybody out there and, and whatever barbershop, I want to tell you all, all Good y'all style. brothers in there and, and whoever's there, God bless you all. Thank y'all for listening. Go ahead, brother. Yes, and the question came about that. Could a woman be head of a church? Yes, here's your answer. She can do anything, but the question really shouldn't be can she, it should be should she. Okay. (laughs) Because a a man can go put on a dress, a man can go uh, 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 call himself a wife, but should he do it? Absolutely not. To answer your question in the barber shop without going too far, I imagine y'all don't have Bibles which are in the barber chair, but to answer your question is this. There is not one, and I'm going to tell you, we're going to put this on our list of lies today, if that's cool with you. I'm going to just let you be our first, you you put our first list of lies toward in the church, okay? Okay. And the lie is this, that God have ever ordained a woman to be a pastor or bishop over a church. I am telling you today, without even batting my eye, the answer is absolutely no. Okay. Now, I need to tell you a little bit why, so that I don't sound like a, a, a sexist jerk, okay? Because okay. there are a lot of preachers that don't think a woman can do anything but bring water to them and vacuum the floor. And that's not what I'm saying, because women can do things that men cannot do. And there's a value to women. Without a woman, you don't have a nation. That's right. So I don't want you to think I'm, I'm listen, I, I watch, if you remember, if you watch Fred Sanford, Fred Sanford used to do something with his hand. Anytime a man always got something bad to say about a woman, something tricky going on. I thank God for women. I thank God for my own wife. I thank God for what God is doing in the lives of women. So now let me give you your answer. Is that okay? Yes, sir. All right. No, and here is why. Now watch this, brother. Y'all in the barbershop today. Uh-huh. And y'all not debating on whether a man can be the head of a church, right? No, sir. Now, why not? Now, think about this. It's going to sound kind of silly, but I'm getting to a point. Why are y'all not debating over if a man can be the head of a church? Let me tell you why. And you tell me if I'm right. Okay. Because somewhere in the Bible, people have already seen that men are already heads of the church. Okay. That's right. Here is the problem. The reason why y'all not in the barbershop debating over whether a man can be the pastor is because you see it in the Bible. The reason why there's a debate as to whether a woman can be the leader of a church is because you don't find one woman in the whole Bible that ever pastored or led a church or was a bishop. Not even one. That's right. Now, let me tell you a little bit, just a little bit, why that's the case. In the Bible, the Bible says the head of Christ, of course, is his father, God. And the head of the man is Jesus. And the head of the woman is who? The man. man. And watch this. That's the order God gave us. The Bible then tells us that if a man cannot take and rule his house at home, how can he rule the house of God? That's right. So if the Bible tells you that the prerequisite to running God's house is first making sure you got your house in order in order at home, why would God then tell a woman she can lead the church if she's got to go home and submit to her husband? Right. right. So when they watch this, let me give you the picture like this. So you got a husband and a wife. The wife is the pastor. She on the way to church. She got to submit to him all the way till they get to church. Then when they get to church, they got to hurry up and switch positions. <laughs> That's right. That's not what God says. Now, let me tell you a little sneaky thing that I'm going to get in trouble for that none of the other preachers going to tell you, but I don't care 
And that's probably why y'all tune in to me, because I don't care. I'll tell you the truth, and, and then I'll let you and God deal with it from there. And that is this. The new thing churches are doing is they're making the pastor and his wife co-pastors. Uh -huh. You see that a, a lot now, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, that, that's even worse. Because, or oh, just as bad. Because first of all, God didn't, just because God sent a man, if he sent the man, because half the men is pastoring, God didn't send them either. But just because God sends a man to pastor, don't mean he automatically connects y'all to be a team far as being pastors. Now watch this. Anytime you've got two pastors, two equal, that's why they call them co-pastors. The word co means lateral authority. Okay. If you got two leaders or two heads, anything that has two heads is a freak. <laughs> give it to me. Give it to me. Now, what you're looking at in the church, nobody going to tell you this, but this is why y'all got to make up y'all mind. Do y'all want the truth or y'all want to get watered down Christian radio every day? Here want, you go. The, the reason why these preachers are making their wives the co-pastor is so if they die, their wives get to take over the church and get to the money <laughs> to keep the money in the family. That's right. Because the greatest form of nepotism you ever want to see is in the church and every bishop, they got to make his son a bishop and his, and his grandson a bishop just because you, uh, my, my dad is a pastor. I'm supposed to go too. God didn't say that. God got to call and send a man. That's right. So to answer your question, brother, there is no biblical scripture. And I could tell you more, but I'll give you all enough in the barbershop. And I'm, I, uh, I don't know if you want to give a shout out to the barbershop or not, but you're welcome to tell them where everybody where you are. And I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'm going to make that number one on the list. Women. I shouldn't do this because it's going to get me in trouble here. But women leading I have to put it this way, women pastors. Okay. All right? It's a lie. It's not true. Now, did I make any sense so far? Yes, you did. A whole lot of sense. Is the brothers in the barbershop, can they hear me? Yes, they can. Y'all, don't forget to tune in to us every Thursday at 12 and every Saturday at 3 p.m. Y'all call me back with y'all next argument because it might be on our list. Okay. We're at, we at Chris Styles Barbershop, Chesapeake. There it is. And Chris Styles Barbershop need to meet me tonight because it's going to blow y'all mind when I, everybody in that barbershop, y'all sit still because I don't want to mess your line up. But let me just tell you this. Everyone at Chris Styles Barbershop need to come out tonight because you ain't heard nothing yet. If you think they lied about that, wait till you hear about tithing. Wait till you hear about hell. Right, let me just be quiet and let y'all give me the list. Let them go. 357-9546. Tonight we're going to meet at 1570 North Military Highway to Holiday Inn. It's free of charge. Come in your jeans and t-shirts. Just get there. It's fully interactive. You need to be there. All of these preachers, pastors, deacons, elders, mothers, everybody. We got another caller? 357-9546. Get on the phone. Let's get our lives rolling because I'm losing time. I need five minutes. Can y'all tell me the lies? I need some lies. Number one is women pastors. Let's get number two. Let's get number two. I'm putting it in my phone as we speak. I will not leave it next time because I have my phone with me, the Lord willing. All right? Let's make this list of lies in the church. Anybody want to take another one? Let's go to the phone lines. Call you on the air. Hello? Yes, welcome. Thank you. Pastor Scarborough. Yes. Um, this is one of the lies, too, that there is no forgiveness for self-murder. Whoa. So number two, and you're right, that is a lie. That, I'm going to put it like this, and you tell me if this is okay with you. That suicide is unforgivable, that God will not pardon or forgive. In other words, if you commit suicide, you're going to hell. Yes. I'm putting it on the list at number two. I had a lady that called not too long ago. She was in tears. Her son committed suicide, and it was this broadcast that pointed out to her. We do a teaching on that, and it showed her that nowhere in the Bible does it say that suicide, you cannot be saved. Somebody made that up, and that's a horrible thing to make up because there are many of us that have dealt with friends and family and so on and so forth of people who were sick mentally. And that Listen, anytime you kill yourself, you're sick. Right. And and God is not a God that if someone is sick and they go and kill themselves, that they're just doomed to burn in a torture pit. We're going to talk about that. And number two, ladies and gentlemen, thank to, thanks to our sister, number two is suicide. 
Unforgivable. And Pastor Scarborough, I'd just like to mention also, you gave us number nine last week which was the um, women bishops and pastors and ministers in the church. Yep. And, 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 and you know what? I got it on the list, and we'll come back and deal with this in a different order, but I want to put it into my permanent base in this phone because, as I told you, I left the paperback. Right. At, uh, I left the paperback back at home. So we're going to make the list again today. And don't worry, next week we're going to start diving into what's wrong with these lies. Let's just make this list today and go from there. We already touched on the women pastors a little bit anyhow. So, right. yes, you're exactly right. Suicide, un being an unforgivable sin is a lie. I'm here to tell you that even those who commit suicide will eventually, notice my words, eventually be saved. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to come out and see us. Th I'll be there, good Lord willing. All right. There it is. Thank you so much, 357-9546. Come out and see us at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. 1570 North Military. By the way, doors open at 730, and we'll meet you there. No excuses, free of charge. You'll learn more in this class free than all the classes you paid for in seminary, Bible college, conferences, so on and so forth. Let's go to the line and take another caller. Caller, you on the air. Pastor, one of the larger ones of the lives that are being told in the church is some of them going to be raptured out of here. Holy smoke. <laughs> number three, number three lie is the rapture. I hope the folks in the bridal shop hear what I'm saying. Number three is the rapture. I'm here to tell you that we're going to talk about it, but I'm going to put it on my list right now, that there is no such thing as a rapture. Somebody lied. I got three lies up here. I got to get this list cooking. Got another one? 357-9546 or 622-9546. Caller, you're on the air. Hello, caller. Welcome. Hello. Yes, I, my name is Jessica, and I wanted to know, I heard what you said about women as pastors. Yes. But what about women as, as minister in the ministry as general? I believe there is a definite place for women to share, to minister. I have scripture that says that women have said, thus say of the Lord. I've had scripture that says that women prophesy and they are prophetess. I've had scripture that says women can do everything God say. Yes, yes, as women can are judges. I believe a woman can I believe a woman can be the president of the United States. I believe she can do all of that. But in the church, God has set an order, and it's not because she is not as smart as the man, because Lord knows women are, ha most of the time they're smarter. It's not because she can't preach as good, because Lord knows they can preach, and they can speak, and so on and so forth. It is because God has a reason, and we need to go back over that reason when we teach these particular subjects. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir, it certainly is. We thank and God for women. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say about tithing. So can I put that as number four lie on the list? Yes. There it is. I got it. You need to come out. You know that? If you haven't gotten the truth on tithing yet, you need to meet us at 1570 North Military Highway. Maybe when you get off work or whatever you're doing, meet us up there. It's free of charge. Come on and sit in the class because in this class, I'll give you whatever. Tonight, we're talking about hell. I'm going to show you that nobody is in hell right now. That The Bible never said it. I'm going to show you that hell is not what the church told you. That there is a hell in the Bible, but it has nothing to do with what they told you. You don't want to miss it. So if you can come out, come out and meet us at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn, and call me as much as you like, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. 357-9546. We rolling. Got another one? All right. We ought to. 357-9546 is the number. Call me, call me, call me. Don't wait. I'm running out of time. Y'all know I go off the air in less than 19 minutes. So call me, call me. I'm trying to fill the list. Got another caller. Let's go to the lines. Hey, uh, Pastor Ross, this is Brother Sid here. You just uh, said, mentioned it, this so-called hell that uh, everybody always saying that you, the preacher saying you're going to hell, you're uh -oh. going to hell. They need to know what this hell is, and, 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 and there ain't no such thing when they preach it. Number five. Number five on our list is the teaching of eternal hell 
torture and fire. I'm putting that on the list as a big fat lie that the church have used to control people for years and years and years, and it's going to blow your mind. And I used to be the main preacher telling people, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. And then the truth hit me. So yes, 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 I got it at number five. Now I'm on number six waiting on my next call. Thank you. 357-9546 or 622-9546. Call me. Come on. I'm running out of time. Get on the lines. I got to hit the road and go back and then come back tonight and meet you at 1570 North Military Highway, the Holiday Inn. Call are you on the air? Hi, how are you? Wonderful. Well, my, my name is Vivian. I was just calling to ask you a question. Yes. And, and a statement also. Okay. I understand that the church always speak about um, Christmas. And I know for a fact that is not anything in the Bible of the teaching of the Holy Father. And any of these holidays, Christmas, Easter, or Halloween. Don't you start no stuff in here today. <laughs> you, can I put it, number six today, Christmas is of the devil. It's a lie. Yes. I'm putting it on the list right now. You ask for it. You want the real truth. You got a pastor here who's not afraid. Not only do I preach against Christmas, I preach against Easter. Yes. See, but I know that the truth is not anything of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, Christmas That's is nothing. Man-made. Christmas is sun worship. It's yes. about the birth of the sun. And Easter is about the rising of the sun. That's why they got sunrise service. It's mm-hmm. nothing but paganism and lies. Mm-hmm. Jesus was not born by three wise men. That didn't even happen in the Bible. Right. Everything they told you about Christmas in the church is a big fat lie, including that green Christmas tree. And I, right. I want to tell you today, you just put number six on the list. It's Christmas, and I'm going to put holidays. Well, mm-hmm. Matter of fact, let's spread them out. Christmas is number six. You need to come out because you ain't heard nothing yet. Wait till you hear the rest I of the lies. Just- adore you and I just really want you to get these Christians to understand this is man-made stuff that they bring it into their Holy Father's house. You done started some good trouble today, <laughs> sister. God bless you. Please continue to listen and come out and meet me. Please, one day, come see me. I thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, 1570 North Military Highway. You ain't heard nothing. You got them holidays together, but I want to make sure you got tithing together. I want to make sure you got salvation together. Somebody, look, they even lied to you. Well, I better leave that alone. That's another one y'all got to put on the list. Let's go to the line. Another one? Let's go to the line. Caller, you on the air. Hello. I wonder if we could uh, talk about the confusion about once saved, always saved. Woo. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on the list, but I need to explain it. I'm going to put it on the list not as a lie, but as a, as a, as a, a, a point of question. Because I'm going to explain to you where the confusion comes in about once saved, always saved. And then I'm going to explain to you about whether or not you can lose your salvation. Because we got to understand what salvation is. So let's just put this. Let's put salvation. What is it? I'm going to put salvation as number seven. And I'm going to put in, in parentheses, make a note rather. Once saved, always saved. Eternal security is what they call it. Uh, yes, I'll explain that too, sir. Thank you for putting that on the list. You got anything else or you good? Uh, no, sir. That's, uh, that's a juicy one right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I knew y'all would do well with these lies that y'all are taught every Sunday. We're only on number seven. I need to make it eight today. Call me quickly. Come on, I'm running out of time. We got 15 minutes. 357-9546 or 622-9546. Got another caller. Caller, you on the air. Pastor Rob, mm-hmm. this is Brother Sid again here. Yeah, you need to put uh, uh, Satan. Who was Satan? Was Satan Lucifer or, or what? Okay, I- I'll, put it, I'll put it like Pastor. this. I'll put it like this, Brother Sid. Number eight is Satan was a... Good angel turned bad. That's a lie. <laughs> Satan. Oh, here go another one. Satan is Lucifer. <laughs> is Lucifer. That's a big lie. All right, brother Sid. Oh, Lord, my phone is going dead. All right. Go, go. Thank you so much. Let's go. Three, five, seven, nine, five, four, six. Somebody just text me. I phone the phones are hot and I can't get through. But this is but this is another lie. And I'm gonna add it to the list because they're exactly right. We are saved through our faith. Whoa, that's a lie. That's what every preacher preach. We're saved through our faith. No, you're not. Let's put it at number nine. 
saved by your faith. That, that's a lie. Yep, Billy Graham told you a lie. That ain't, that's not how you're saved. Your faith ain't gonna cut it, I guarantee you. Number 10, y'all call me. Got another one? We got two waiting. Phone lines are smoking today. Caller, you on the air. Hey, Scarborough, this is Austin. Um, <laughs> mine is the Shepherd Movement. Yep, 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 yep. Now, for and, those... um, and last week, the first one that uh, was made was, when you die, where do you go? Okay, hold on one minute. For those who don't know what the Shepherd Movement is, that's the movement that got all y'all talking about your pastor is your covering and you got to do what he say and be obedient. I'll talk about that because that ain't nothing but a big fat lie. And then last you said something about what again? Uh, when you die, where do you go? When one. you die, you go someplace. <laughs> but number 11, when you die, you go to heaven or hell or purgatory. That's a lie. Nobody's in heaven today. Did y'all hear what I just said in the barbershop? Nobody is in heaven today. Moses not there. Abraham not there. Peter not there. Paul not there. John not there. Your grandma not there. Got another caller? Caller, you on the air. Pastor Ron, how many Christians do you know? I ain't never met one myself, but go ahead. Yeah, everybody always talking about they Christian this and they Christian that. And I'm trying to find out about the Christian thing myself. I never met one because the definition of Christian is Christ-like. And I ain't never met one person that's like them, especially not celebrating Christmas, paying tithes, speaking in tongues physically. I ain't met one yet that's a Christian because right away Jesus didn't do any of those things. Matter of fact, you got to have the Christians thinking they're going to be cursed if they don't pay tithes, and you can't find one scripture where Jesus did it. Why would you call yourself a Christian when Christ didn't do it? And how could you be in sin if you don't do it? And Christ was not a sin, was not a sinner, and he didn't do it. So, yeah, put that in. Hold on for a minute. Let me see how I'm going to word this real quick. We're not going to put that as a lie, but I just thank you for bringing that up anyway. You're exactly right. I ain't never met one. Pardon my English. All right. 357-9546 or 622-9546. I got some folks texting me, too, by the way. My phone going to die soon, so if y'all try to reach me after the show, y'all got to give me time to go charge my phone. All righty. I got listening from Newport News. Would like you to visit the peninsula. Shout out to Jeff. All right. Got another caller. Caller, you on the air. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome. Add to the list the one I said last week that you have to speak in tongues to prove you have evidence of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues, evidence of the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Let me see. Speaking in tongues, evidence of Holy Ghost. And even what tongues is. The church don't have a clue. They call speaking in tongues when they say, Ila Bohola That's right. And that's I right. promise you, that's not it. That's not that's what not the Bible it. talking about at all. I used to do it, and I used to believe in it. Then the truth hit me. If you want to know the truth, everybody need to come out and see us at 1570 North Military Highway. Sister, it's always good to hear your voice. And you got it, number 12, speaking in tongues as the evidence of the Holy Ghost. That's lie number 12. Number 13, y'all. Anybody else? 622-9546. I got nine minutes. I got nine minutes. Any more lies? Y'all want any more? Any more? Let's go to the to the phone lines. Call you on the air. Pastor Ross. Yes. Greet in the name of Jesus. Bless you. I'm the Carolina guy that always speaks away on my lunch hour to call you. Welcome. But look, I just want to tell you something. Several weeks ago, I done some research, and you know, you are very informative to this world and to the people. And I look back in the book of James in the Old Testament, and it talked about the way the world can come to an end. And James talks about that dreadful day 
about the uh, star Jupiter, about the uh, planet Jupiter. And, you know, I did not know this, but, you know, the information that you put out there, if people would just look it up, they wouldn't have to doubt you. If they would just do the research and come out and learn, they will see that they are spending their times on Sundays learning lies. And when, let me tell you, the Bible said we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Your worship is locked into the truth. 357-9546 or 622-9546. I got you now. I got this list. We're about number we're 13 in. We're 13 in. We're on 13, that is. 12 in. 357-9546 or 622-9546. Call are you on the air? Yes, I want to inquire about Leviticus 19.28, about making markings and cuts in the body for the dead. Yes. Uh... It's talking about, well, it says what it says, but, you know, the Bible always means much more than just how it and what it says. Uh, all you got to do is look at these tattoos. They, yeah, well, they're trying to say there's Christian tattoo artists out there. It's they're liars. They used back then. How you going to put Christian like Christ in front of something that's not like Christ? Exactly what I said. God don't want you marking your skin, walking around looking like a subway in Harlem. <laughs> marks all on your face, neck, and back, uh, pictures all over you. God made you beautiful just the way you are. And when you come to our class, we do a teaching on that. It's called bloodletting. If you go research the term bloodletting, you will see that tattoos come from a spiritual ritual, and something happens to you that people don't know when you get them. So you better confess it, repent, and move on quickly because there's nothing good about a tattoo. Thank you for asking. We'll give you the truth right here. 357-9546, call me. We talk about everything and anything. Running out of time, y'all. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for tuning in. All right, maybe we lost him. Let's go. 357-9546. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, Pastor, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, the people are taking communion once a month, the uh, actual communion, but uh, they need to know that's allowed. So. Number 13, taking communion. No, 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 let me back this up. Nothing wrong with having communion with God. I'm going to put as number 13, communion as juice and crackers. Right. That's a big lie. <laughs> it's impossible to have communion with God over juice and crackers. And I'm putting it at number 13, brother. Thank you so much. Got to go. Woo, we got our list now. Anymore? We got another caller. Caller, you on the air? Hey, Scarborough, what about having an image of Jesus? Any or... pictures? Number 14. Pictures? Images? Of Jesus? Or God? Is a, an abomination? It's amazing that almost all churches got a picture of Jesus in the foyer or somewhere. Got him holding hands with thunder in the sky. Y'all seen the pictures. And every one of them, God said he forbid. If you got a picture of Jesus in your house or on the cross or a crucifix, it's a big fat lie. Put it on the list number 14. Thank you so much. 357-9546. Let me see what time it is here. It's 1255. You better get in while you can. Anybody didn't? Now, is anybody learning anything? I know we haven't even taught on these issues in depth, but just by hearing these lies and us touching, just talking about them, is anybody learning anything? Call me now. We got four minutes. Maybe you're a new caller. You love the show. You're going to listen next week. Call me and tell me. I'm going to listen. I get in the car and drive all the way from Richmond just to talk to y'all. And I don't. And for those who don't know how radio work, I don't get paid to do this. I have to pay to do it. So I already know the information, but we have to pay to give it to you. 357-9546, any first-time callers? Any first-time listeners? How about second time? Call me right now and say, hey, it's me, I'm listening. Oh, I'm going to listen. Oh, I'm interested. I'm not sure about what you're saying, but I'm listening. Shout-out to Chris Styles Barbershop for tuning in with us today. I want to see the whole shop. I want to see all of y'all there. All of y'all need to pile up because you ain't going to believe the lies y'all been told. Caller, you on the air. 
Let's go to the lines again. Uh, Carla, you're on the air. Thank you for holding. Thank you. I, I called before. Well, I don't, I'm so glad you called again. Go ahead. Okay, but I just want to also say that the cross also is an um, abomination to uh, worship that. Listen, the, the reason why Jesus is even said to be on what we call a cross is because the cross was for cursed. It was cursed. The Bible says, hang it, cursed is the man that hangeth on a tree. The tree is what we call the cross. And I know that some people argue that it was a stake, but yes, Jesus on the cross, the crucifix. Why do you think when you look in the scary movies, they always got somebody with a cross? Okay? There's nothing holy about a cross. That's right. You should never wear it or never worship that cross. All these bishops, they got the chain with the cross tucked in their pockets. They're practicing witchcraft and don't even know it. Exactly. And I thank you so much. I enjoy listening to you, and I just want all this truth to get out. Well, you're helping me a whole lot today, and you're stirring up some good trouble. So thank you so much. <laughs> all right. Bye-bye. Three five seven nine five four six. I got one minute, and I got to go. Y'all can text me, and I'll get my text when my phone comes back on. Uh, at 804-245-7009. That's my personal number. You can call me or text me later about more information. It's 804-245-7009. Especially those of you that will be interested in me moving a class to the other side on the peninsula. Taking it from the south to the peninsula or possibly doing another class on the peninsula. All right? Uh, in saying that, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to tune in to us Saturday at 3 p.m. Don't forget to come out tonight. Why put off? Get all the church people you can. Pile them up. Bring them. It's free of charge. Bring them tonight. Bring them tonight, God. My God, just draw them in, Lord. You pull them in, Lord. Don't let them think for themselves today, God. I ask you in the name of Jesus to do just that. I love you all. 1570 North Military Highway tonight, 730. Doors open. Be there. Don't miss it. See you later.